Okay, um, so welcome to our first lecture. So this week we will talk about uh, what is data visualization and also why data visualization is very important. Uh, we will also start our lab to get familiar with Tableau. So that is uh, um, the major tool that we, uh, we are going to use for this entire semester uh, to learn uh, data visualization. Uh, so my name is Xu Bing Wei, and um, I am an assistant professor at the School of Integrated Science at JMU. And uh, here are my email and also my Twitter and also my office. Uh, so this is my virtual office. So I will host uh, the office hours on WebEx uh, from Monday to uh, Friday between 7 and 8 p.m. at Eastern Time. Uh, I'm also an AWS Educated Cloud Ambassador, so um, I'm pretty familiar with AWS. And um, in the end of this semester, we will use some uh, visualization tools on AWS as well. So in addition to those uh, slides on Canvas, so I also have my YouTube channel and also GitHub where you can find out uh, the tutorials about uh, data mining, Python, uh, data visualization, uh, AWS, etc. And you can also find out those source code like Python code, uh, the data set, etc. on my GitHub um, website. All right, so why does data, data visualization matter? So why do we have this class? and why this is even a required class uh, in our major. Uh, well, we all know that uh, uh, we have data. So fortunately, we have data. And from those data, we can get some insight and also that can help us uh, to make decisions. Uh, so what happens in 30 seconds? So this is from my big data lecture. So that in the in 30 seconds, there are more than 1 million emails, spam emails being sent. 70,000 hours of videos have been watched on Netflix. And 4 million videos have been watched by YouTube users. OK, and there are also a lot of other data that's being generated by human beings. So there are tons of data that are already there. OK, so right now, it is not a big issue that how can we store data. So from data mining class, you all know that there are several types of the data containers that can handle organizing the data. However, the problem is, re is really to analyze the data so that we want from the data that we want get information, generate knowledge that can help us to make decisions. So getting data is not the ultimate goal. So the ultimate goal is that help us to make decisions or to take actions. OK, so the data are just simply the numbers all the statistics and we want from data we want to have information and that can learn something about someone or something and that can give us knowledge and finally and hopefully that can help us to take actions okay so that is that what we really want to do with the data so not collecting data but from analyzing data we can make better decisions. All right, so now let's see, look at the data. So we all have uh, taken statistics, um, Python, Intro to Data Science, and also um, data mining class. So here I gave you some data. So OK, so how can you make analysis? So by just looking at the tables and numbers, it is very hard to generate any information. Right. So you see, OK, so you know how to uh, do statistics. So you can do that in Python, in any other tools. 
And if you calculate for those four groups of the numbers, so four pairs of numbers, you can see that all those numbers, they have the same statistics. So they have the same mean variance for X and Y. And the correlation are exactly the same. Okay, they have the exact correlations. And if you still remember the linear regression models, you can see the the linear regression parameters are also exactly the same. So if you are using the SQL, if you are using any other statistical tools to analyze the data, so um, and the result will be that okay, so those four pairs of the numbers are exactly the same. Okay, so that is the conclusion that you can get by just using statistics or by using SQL. Okay, so if that is the true case, so if we create that one on a visualization, okay, and now we can see the patterns and we can tell they are different. Okay, they are different. So in this case, we can see um, the X, Y is not, does not change when you, ch when the X change. However, in this case, we can see X and Y have very strong positive linear relationship. And in this case, X and Y have positive linear relationship, but that relationship is not stronger as um, this case. And in the group two, we can say they have a nonlinear relationship. Okay, so those are something that some knowledge that we can we can get only by visualizing the data. Okay, so from this example that I want to highlight why visualization is important. So data visualization is no longer a personal preference. Okay, it's not like okay, just some people want see some beautiful chart, then we do the visualization. No, it is a necessity. Okay, so it is one of the important steps when we are trying to understand the data. Um, so some insights can only be found through visualization. And the first step to understand the data should always to use visualizations. Okay, otherwise, you may miss some very important um, information from your data. And also another reason is because our human brains are very interesting that they can process some um, symbols very fast. So even before you realize that. So those are what they call the picture superior, superiority effect. Okay. Uh, so let's see an example here. So here, let's see that I gave you some numbers. Okay, so can you find out how many sevens are there? Okay, you can pause the video and you can see that uh, how many sevens are there. And what about now? So if I gave you colors, so is that easier? Okay, how about now if I ma make it bold? So that's much easier. Or if I add, add those underlying items. OK. So those are something that are called pre attentive attributes of those visual perceptions. So like the color, the size, the orientation, and also texture. So those are the pre attentive attribute of the visual perceptions. And we have more of them, like shape, lens, and also colors, okay, positions, etc. So those attributes that our human eyes can process very, very fast. Okay, so very, very fast that uh, we can identify those patterns by just use based on those pre attentive attributes of those visual perceptions. OK, so those visual perceptions like shape. OK, so if I change the shape, it's very easy to identify the change of the shape. Orientation. OK. And the color. So we will talk about color later. So the different hues or different type of colors. 
or the value of the color. So that is brightness or darkness. OK, and also the texture. OK, and also the size. OK, so it's very easy to show that one dot is bigger than the others. And also position. OK, so you can see the small, even the smallest difference between those dots. And the order. OK, so if we sort our data, so that's very easy for us to see what is the biggest and what is the smallest. OK, so now let's watch a video. They say knowledge is power, but how do we make knowledge powerful? Especially when that knowledge comes in the form of data. Lots of data. How do we find the meaning? Tell the story. Share the story. Infographics. Where data meets design. What makes good data visualization? Take a few seconds to count the sevens in this number set. How many were there? Not sure? Now try. A simple color change makes comprehension almost instant. Color is one of several pre-attentive attributes, like size, orientation, flicker, visual clues that the human brain processes within 250 milliseconds. Now imagine that we're not looking for specific numbers, but patterns. We can use color to show correlation size to show quantity, or orientation to show trends. And not just data. The power of design can be used to better communicate all sorts of information. Processes, hierarchy, anatomy, chronology. Better communication through innovation. Because your message is only as good as your ability to share it.